Welcome everybody back to the roasting lab of the Fat Beans Laboratories. Um, gonna be doing a really quick roast tonight. Uh, got to go have some dinner for the new year. So just jumping on, kind of catalog the roast and to give you kind of my thoughts of how the Sumatran that we did last time, how it turned out, and some of the different things we're gonna be trying tonight. So Go ahead and warm up the machine and got our other half pound of the Sumatran that we did yesterday. So we're we'll finishing that up today. Uh, so last time we did a half pound and today we did a half pound. Now, like I told you last time, I got eight of these little one pound packs. And really what they're doing is just kind of giving me uh, kind of an idea of what the flavors are. I'm splitting them into two because for one and two roasts, I'm roasting one, I'm waiting a couple of days, I'm tasting it, and then I'm trying to see if I can enhance the roast at all based on what I'm tasting. Now in the future, uh, as I get start doing more roasting and I start trying to do a little bit more quality control, uh, there are techniques um, where I could say roast three batches and then test, taste all three batches and really say, okay, I like this batch, I don't like this batch. And that's how you really start to uh, refine the types of flavor profiles um, that you're going after. But right now, because I've never tasted Sumatran before, well, I might have tasted it, but I never tasted out of, you know, that I roasted. Really all I'm doing is roasting it once drinking a couple cups, saying, do I like it or don't I? And then roasting it again. Uh, so with that in mind, I did, I roasted some up today. Uh, it was pretty good. I put it through the AeroPress. Um, I did get a lot of the notes, uh, especially the uh, honeysuckle uh, floral notes at the end of it, and some of the more acidic um, pipe tobacco tastes. Uh, I did get some of the aftertastes. Uh, what I was missing was a lot of the... Um, aromas that I've come to kind of enjoy or expect from th other things I've roasted out of here. So there is going to be a couple of things that I'm going to try to do different today to try to get some more of those aromatics in the coffee. And that's going to be more on, I think what happened was, is I kicked it into its development too early and then I pulled it out too early as well. So this time really going to let it start to enter that crack before I remove the heat. Uh, whatever it is about the Sumatran, it um, was reacting to the heat. It was being a little bit more greedy on the heat than uh, other ones that I've done a couple of uh, a couple of roasts prior. So I'm going to try. Now, again, it may end up just being a bust or I over roasted or under roasted, but I do want to see how well I can manipulate the flavors of this um, just going from last roast to this roast. So just go ahead and put the scale away because, like I said, it was a half time both times, and we are kind of having a hard time heating up, so probably nothing. So go ahead and just throw the beans here in the roasting chamber. Uh, again, this is just a wire basket. It's got some of these agitators in here that allow you to allows the beans to roast a little bit more evenly. And I will say that about the Be More, again, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but it does get pretty good agitation and pretty, the roasts are really uniform. And I have liked that for this little machine. So that is definitely a plus for the Be More that I've noticed. Um, so kick this in here. And we'll go ahead and save this just in case. Um, let's see where we're at. Up nicely. Uh, while that's heating up, I did add a new light, which if you notice in the chat, the one of you that's here right now, uh, if you notice, if it's more well lit, let me know. I know I put the light so it kind of halos the roaster, because uh, really the roaster is the, uh, is the star of the show. I do have some fun kind of frequencies I can test out. So that's a blue the rose. So... I'll be testing that out. Um, and as I mentioned, previous roasts, I'm going to be 
adding some different things over the next couple of days. So the row space should be getting uh, quite a bit of an upgrade uh, past this white concrete wall. We're going to be adding something just to make it seem a little bit more homely, um, a little bit cleaner, better for my own headspace while I'm roasting, more appealing to look at. All right. So we're almost warmed up. Um, we'll get roasting here pretty soon. And I'll try to get out of here. So we got our beans. Like I said, we're trying to get this up. Just a real recap on this Sumatran. It is a washed, so you will notice that there is particles falling out. This is really a dirty kind of bean. It's because some of those coffee cherries have been left on the bean. Um, that does allow for the bean to absorb some of that fruitiness from the coffee berry while it's drying. This is considerably dirtier than anything I've roasted. And uh, it's definitely keep making it a lot harder to keep clean here. All right, so looks like we're coming up to the heat that we want. A quick reminder, I'm usually preheating up to 200 degrees. That's just the degree I like to preheat. Uh, some people have said no preheat. Some people have said, you know, they've gone as high as 250. I have seen that 200 kind of gets me to where I want to be when I'm doing a half a pound. If I were trying to do, let, let's say, a much darker roast, I would probably preheat it more uh, to make sure that I could get up to as high a heat as possible. So let's uh, go ahead and program our machine here. Fast run. Yeah. As always, we're going to keep good notes of the roast. Uh, especially since we are doing something a little bit different. It's nice that I can compare the roast notes that I took last time with the roast that I'm doing this time. So, what's happening right now is we are just drying the beans out. Uh, we're trying to bring it, um, trying to get the beans up to a reasonable temperature so they can kind of take over the process. Um, but early on, we're just trying to get that moisture out of here. As a quick review, the beans have about 11% moisture in them when they are shipped. So, uh, when they're picked, they have quite a bit of moisture in them. Um, they get them down to about 20% moisture. Then once they get to 20% moisture, they're going to try to dry it uh, to about 13 to 11 to 13%. At that point, it can stay good uh, anywhere I've heard up to two years. Um, some people I've heard say about six months is a good shelf life for beans. So uh, if you are buying green beans, you want to make sure that you're not keeping them much more than six months. But they can stay up to two years. But like everything, when you start moving past that freshness, kind of running it, you kind of run into the possibility that you start losing some of the notes. So uh, anything up to six months uh, will keep that 11% moisture. And then while we're roasting the beans, we're just trying to get them to the point where we're getting all that moisture out of the beans, especially early on in the drying phase. So we're gonna dry the beans out and then like I said earlier, we're gonna to try to go a little bit, a little bit more development than we did last time. The flavor I got from when I tasted it was pretty good. I got a lot of notes, but I was missing a lot of that aromatic and uh, with coffee, the scent is a big portion of the flavors that you're able to kind of catch and capture. Uh, for the new year, I guess, since this is new, the New Year's Eve, my goal is going to be really to get more 
educated on how you do a quality control, getting the kind of being able to taste the same notes over and over and over again. That's something I really want to put a lot of my time and energy into. I think that's not only going to make me happier as a coffee drinker and, you know, someone who really enjoys coffee, but I think as a roaster, that's going to give me, it's going to be a good education for being able to take a more of a control element of everything that I'm roasting, whether it be on this be more or whether it be on a different machine. So it's going through the phase nicely. Uh, it's definitely, like I mentioned in the last roast, uh, this, because it has a little bit of that um, cherry particles, the smells are a lot more intense during the roasting. So it is hitting that kind of malted rice, cooked rice scent right now, but it does have an undertone of uh, kind of a, like a dustiness um, so kind of a sugary dustiness as well um, in the unwashed cherry. So just kind of comparing it to where we were at last night, um, maybe two nights ago, looks like we are developing right at the same speed. So that is good. Uh, all the temperatures are kind of coming together at the same time. Um, so that is... So right now we are about almost five minutes in and it's, uh, I think it's one of the unique things about roasting your own coffee, the scents, they change so rapidly that right now I can even tell without looking at it that the beans are dry, or really starting to dry out because the scent that I'm getting coming off the bean has just changed. And it's pretty intense. It's moved from that malted, kind of that cooked rice and it's starting to pick up a lot more of the sugary uh, a little bit of a smoke, not too much smoky, but you definitely can tell that something's beginning to take place internally inside the beans. Like I said we're right uh, where we want to be as far as where we were last time. Everything's looking good. Beans are drying out nicely. Everything's taking place right where we want it to be. Starting to brown up a little bit. All right, so at this point, We've gotten the machine about as high as it'll go, and this is, this is good because the beans are starting to brown, which means that beans are we're really starting to charge it up to where we want to go. Um, again, this machine doesn't really give us a good idea of what the bean temperature is. Right now, the bean temperature at this phase with its color should be right around about 360 degrees. Uh, because of the infrastructure and how this machine is put together, it really can't, uh, you can't get a probe inside the beans. Um, that is one thing that's really starting to weigh on me because I am curious as to what the actual temperature of the bean is. I've seen people do all sorts of uh, kind of MacGyvering to try to add different thermocouples, which a thermocouple is like, think of it like a thermometer into this machine to get the bean reading, but uh, that is just one limitation of the bean ore is that you really can never be for sure what the bean temperature is. Um, and that is, it's kind of a bummer because 
really, as you start to track your roasts and do roast profiles, the bean temperature is really what is going to paint the best picture. For this. All right. So, the really the beans have really picked up. Uh, the scent is incredibly strong. It's starting to get a lot more pleasant scents. We're out of that agricultural scent. We moved into much more of a roasted scent. Uh, it is real rich. It's uh, kind of kind of uh, got some smoky, some sugary, smoky scents to it. Uh, the beans have switched colors immensely at this point, uh, and the machine is running at about. 315 degrees internally, uh, which tells me that uh, this roast, we should be re reaching first crack in about a minute, minute and a half. Uh, the external temperature, that is just the air that's being blown out, is reaching a point where it's almost at the first crack as well. And I'm starting to hear the early popping, so I'll just go ahead and be quiet. So hopefully you can pick some of this up on the microphone. So the one adjustment I made from the last roast is I let it kind of enter into, I hear some pops here, into a lot more rolling crack before I reduce the heat. I'm doing this because the scent profile, the aromatics from the last roast were a little bit dull. The tastes were good, but I was missing some of the aromatics. So what I'm trying to do is stretch out the development phase just a little bit longer than I did last time. So this time I let it go about 15 seconds longer than I did last time. So I'm hoping, hoping that by stretching out that development time period, I maybe let a little bit more of those aromatics that I lost. I think I muted the roast a little bit too quick. So I'm hoping by extending the roast a little bit this time, I'm going to be able to develop a little bit more of those uh, aromatic profiles to kind of complement the taste that I was able to get from the last batch. Um, so at this point, should be fully roasted. I'm going to pull it out of the hopper. Set my machine back up. And then so what I've done here is I've taken out just to external it. So even by looking at it, just that little bit extra development time, it is considerably darker than the last time. Uh, it looks much more even than the last batch I did, which already is telling me in the scents that I'm getting off of it, I'm already starting to get some really rich scents. So I think by just kind of allowing it to a little bit more heat on the development side, I really think this should be a much more even and enjoyable batch than the first one. Um, so I will let you know in a couple of days, but this is looking a lot more promising than the last one did. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the vacuum. All the vacuum does is it's uh, just sucking cooler air across the beans. 
This allows for the beans to cool um, much more rapidly than they, they did in this machine. Um, just touching this, it's still extremely hot. So it would take about six to seven minutes just for the machine to cool down enough to the point where the beans could start to get cool air across them. Um, the, everyone I've ever talked to that has used this machine says the allowing it to cool inside the machine really just is going to overdevelop and start to kind of give you a baked taste. And that's why I have crafted the method I do that uses a vacuum to pull cool air across the beans. Just going to answer some questions here. Uh, what's been your favorite scent from the batches? Uh, there's floral notes. Um, really, that is kind of the most the unique thing about freshly roasted coffee is it's very floral. Um, jasmine, hibiscus, um, a lot of it, once you grind it up and you kind of create thousands and thousands, if not millions of particles, you get this really intense flavor, um, kind of this floral note. Another really, there's a buttery richness that comes along with it. Um, depending on how light or dark you go, there's always gonna, there's gonna be a kind of a smoky and a roast sense. Um, the unique thing that I just read about coffee that is so fascinating about freshly roasted coffee and coffee in general is they have not been able to synthesize artificially the scents of coffees because there are just thousands and thousands and thousands of different things going on in the scent profile of coffee that they can't actually recreate it. So think of all the different recreated scents that there are, you know, all the perfumes, all the dot, all the shampoos, all the different things that create scents, candles. They've never been able to actually reproduce, uh, you know, to a noticeable degree, the roasted coffee. So that is one special thing about coffee is that it's just so unique. Freshly roasted coffee is just such a unique scent and it's just, it adds to the entire, you know, kind of the enjoyment of drinking coffee. The scent continues to develop. So even now I'm getting a lot of smokiness. I'm getting a lot of kind of CO2 discharge is in this room. It's kind of smoky in here right now. Um, after about the first day, the CO2 scent kind of goes away, and that's really when the butteriness, the, fl the floral notes, the really intense uh, scents start to enter into the equation. Uh, the, the scent from green bean, the best way I can describe what a green bean smells like is it's very agricultural. It's, it's, not very pleasant at all. It smells kind of sour. It smells kind of grassy. Uh, once it becomes roasted, the scent changes 360 degrees. All those sugars that are locked away, all those proteins that are locked away, that start coming to the surface and really change the, pro, uh, the scent profile. All right, so this is a completely cooled down bean here. And it's, I would call it probably a city plus moving towards full city. It looks, like I said, much more even. Uh, the scent, even from this one, from the last one has, it's a little bit different. This one's a little bit, I'm starting to get a lot of good scents coming off of it. Um, excited about what we were able to do just by tweaking it a couple of seconds in the beginning and tweaking it a couple of seconds at the end. Um, really, that's as much as it takes to get a completely different experience uh, when you are roasting coffee. Um, so I'm going to run it through. I'm going to drop it back in the hopper here, and I'm going to shake a lot of this chaff off. Uh, this Sumatran that I roasted is easily the dirtiest bean I've ever done. Um, a lot of different reasons for that. I think the hybrid process that they wash the beans has definitely made it more dirty. I already know that I'm probably going to clean my machine after the third roast, or I might even just clean it now that I'm done with this pound because this is considerably dirtier, considerably chappier than any of the beans I've ever done before. So 
So I got a good question about City, City Plus. So result okay so the term city city plus uh full city full city plus um and then you would have french and italian or vienna uh those just tell you the darkness so everything prior to first crack it, it doesn't really have a name but once you hit first crack when the beans first start cracking if you were to cut the heat from there uh that is what you would call a city um the terms are way back to, you know, they go way back hundreds of years into coffee, but city is what you would refer to as a light roast. Um, it's very, very light. It's where you would take it if you want to get the most, uh, what the beans, the flavor of the unique flavor of the beans to come out. Um, really, you're only going to experience light roasted coffee or city roasted coffee if you're in the specialty coffee where you're, you know, you're pour over where you're really trying to gather a lot of the unique flavors that the bean has. Uh, City Plus is just a little bit darker. Uh, you let it develop a little bit past first crack, and then it moves to Full City. Full City is a medium roast. Um, it's got all the characteristics of medium roast. The bean itself is very smooth. Um, it doesn't have a ton of oil on the outside. It starts to build a little bit more bitterness. It's Probably most of you that have ever had coffee, you've experienced a full city roast. Uh, medium is probably the most enjoyed type of coffee, not only in America, but worldwide, um, because it's very balanced. It's not too bitter, it's not too acid, it's a very balanced cup of coffee. And if you're just drinking coffee, you're not really looking for a lot of unique flavors, uh, full city is going to be probably what you experience the most. Um, then you get full plus, that is just moving more towards that dark. That's where you start to get to that second crack. So full, full plus is where the first that you get your second crack. If you were to pull it right at second crack, you could get a full plus depending on your roaster. And then right after uh, second crack, you enter into French roast and Vienna roast, and really that's all the flavor has kind of been completely gone. A lot of the oil has been brought to the top. It's very, very, very bitter. Um, but you know, everyone has their own kind of taste uh, profiles. Uh, dark coffee is thought to have, you know, people are like dark coffee because it's very intense flavor, it's very bold. Um, you think like it has more caffeine in it. That, you can argue that um, it doesn't necessarily have more caffeine. It has more oil at the base, um, but that is the dark roast. And, uh, very soon we'll do a dark roast and I'll let you just see uh, kind of the difference between say, Moving from medium, from light to medium, like this is, um, to the darker bean. All right, so we've uh, done our second batch of the Sumatran. I will give you full flavor profiles of this next time to just let you know if anything's changed. Uh, I want to give you a chance if you have any questions. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a quick roast. Uh, in the new year, uh, I am going to try to start doing a little bit longer sessions where I'm going to roast and then spend a little bit more time talking about uh, some of the different theories. And uh, I can happily report that the kitchen or the where I'm going to start brewing some of these on Twitch is almost done. We've made a lot of really good stride there. So hopefully in the next week or so, we can start doing some shows where I'm not roasting but I'm actually brewing. I can start showing you the different type, the brewing types that I've been using that I like uh, to use most. Um, right, so that's, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna wrap it up. I uh, really appreciate everyone watching tonight. Um, it is quick. Uh, do be looking for some changes. I got some exciting things I'm gonna be doing in the background here, just to make it seem a little bit more clean, a little bit more, uh, tidy, a little bit more professional back here. Uh, so be looking for that in the next couple of days as well. Um, uh, it's like I've uh, spent too much time, gonna miss dinner. So you guys have a good, safe, happy new year. I'll see you guys on the other side. Uh, hopefully we can get back to a, more of a situation where we start enjoying some of these things together. Uh, stay safe and I will see you guys